Let's get started. Okay, so a little bit laggy, but we'll should be okay. And welcome to session seven. So again, for people who, who know, just bear with me for a sec. This is where we have everything, and Brian has already also posted a link to Hackaday Project. Uh, before I get started with today's topic, uh, again, congrats to the people who submitted the katas to get uh, the first certificate. And I got a couple um, really nice results uh, tweeted. And just for people who missed it last time, we are doing a, a certificate give out, which is this uh, vector graphic where you can use to print on anything you want and is kind of a hacked Schrodinger's cat. And all you need to do is to find a quantum catas and then do a screenshot that you finished a whole set of katas then post it on either Twitter or LinkedIn, you will get this. Of course, you need to tag these accounts and hashtags so that I will know. So today's topic is on algorithms. We start with the simplest, the earliest, one of the earliest algorithm, which is Deutsch's algorithm. So these are a set of algorithms that are really class, classically taught in academics, so uh, in academia. Um, they were developed uh, in the past couple of decades. And there were early algorithms that scientists were able to show the specific improvement compared to classical algorithm for specific tasks. So the Deutsch algorithm, what it's trying to solve is to figure out if a function is balanced or constant. Balance just means that um, is not a two to one function, it's one to one. So one input gives out one output and there's no repeated ambiguous uh, result. When a function is constant, is a two to one, so here is saying no matter what um, input you give, you will get the same value. So either your function output one or either it is zero. So don't worry that uh, right now I'm just giving a, a short intro. If anything sounds confusing, we're gonna answer that later. And Deutsch Hosa is a expanded Deutsch algorithm for n qubits. And later on, you will also see some of the more complex algorithms that also tend to be more useful. So Groover's algorithm is a uh, search algorithm for an uh, ordered list. And then also the Schwartz algorithm you would use to factorize really large numbers. So there are not a lot of quantum algorithms that are distinctly dif different. These are some of the examples that are doing different things, and most of the later algorithms are developed based on those. Here is a link where you can find all kinds of other algorithms, and I hope that by your self-study of quantum computing, you will be able to come up with more useful algorithms in the future. And also, a lot of these are academic, and we need a lot more large-scale industry solutions. So keep that in mind while you learn these historic algorithms, but also the industry really needs more interesting and useful ones. Before we go to the algorithm, there's a concept called oracles. I, I'm very perplexed. Why, are we call, why do we call these things oracles? Like I was trying to look up um, the definition of oracles. So there's also, there's the, theological definition. Uh, so that's what this cartoon is trying to show. But also in, in quantum computing, we have this uh, quantum oracles that's basically a black box. And there are also a lot of different ways to define it as 
Sometimes people say it's an operation that is used as input to another algorithm. Sometimes people say it's a represent classical functions that return real numbers instead of only a single bit. There's also definitions saying quantum operations, which implement certain classical functions. These are just words and it's not um, that useful. So let's turn them into more intuitive pictures. A classical algorithm looks like this, where it takes some inputs and then you apply a function to the input and you get an output y. A quantum algorithm cannot use this kind of setup because this has no guarantee that this function f of x is reversible. And we introduce reversibility when we were talking about gates. When you're applying an operation onto your qubits, you need to make sure that they can reverse back. So this algorithm setup wouldn't be useful for uh, quantum. So instead, in quantum algorithms, we build a setup like this, where your inputs are encoded into these qubits. And also this output qubit y also goes through this black box. You will get your input qubits out through the box and also uh, your y qubit would become this y uh, with a control knot with f of x. What does that also show? This is trying to uh, give you a proof that you cannot set up a qu quantum algorithm like this. For example, in this uh, case, if y is your f of x, and you can have all these inputs of x, but um, it has a period. It goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, and then repeats. So in this case, you can get a f of x, but then you cannot reverse back. If you say you have a, a value of 3, you don't know if your x started with a 3 or a 7. So here is just trying to show you that Instead, if you write your uh, oracle black box in this way, then you can get a reverse. I wouldn't spend too much time showing you the derivation, but I'm uh, keeping these slides here for you to look at later. So this is just trying to show you that uh, if you set up your circuit like this, it would work and it would be able to reverse back if you do two of them in series, you get your initial inputs back to before. So don't worry about this too much. This is just showing you that um, in quantum algorithms, uh, a lot of them, so I've shown you like teleportation algorithm before, we didn't need Oracle, but a lot of those uh, future later oracles, uh, later algorithms that they need oracles. And this f of x is this classical uh, function that we can get out of this um, black box. And it is also used to construct this black box. So let's just look at an actual example, this deutsch hosa algorithm then. And that's constructed by physicists David Deutsch and mathematician Richard Hosa. Uh, it, at first sight, it seemed to be a very complex circuit. You have a bunch of input qubits and you apply Hardamard gates onto all of them. Um, and also when you input those qubits, they all initialize to zero. So even including your, your input of the oracle, which is your classical output Y, is encoded into this qubit. And it is also starting at zero, but then you do a flip, this x gate, that change it to one and do again a Hardamard gate. And then you throw all of these into this black box. When it comes out, you do a measurement of those input x qubits. And then you would know what 
your function f of x would be. So what Deutsch Hauser algorithm does is to find out if a function f of x is constant, which means f of x is either 0 or 1 for any given x. So constant 0 or constant 1. Or f of x could be balanced, which means half of the time f of x gives you an output of 0, and half of the time it gives you output 1. This is the setup for this algorithm. So it does nothing else. It just tells us if a, con if a function is constant or balanced. It doesn't even tell you exactly what f of x is, but the, what it, this algorithm does is to tell you uh, the nature of f of x. If you want to do this classically, you will have to test every single output given every single input. So you need to run your algorithm uh, n times if you have n numbers. But in this case, with even with n qubits, you just need to run your algorithm once and do the measurement for all these qubits. You will get the answer. So this is what it does much better than classically. A recap, what is H gate? In case you forgot, the H gate brings a 0 or 1 to this uh, intermediate state that is a superposition of 0 and 1. What is a CNOT gate? It, um, I haven't shown you a CNOT gate in Deutsch Hoser uh, black box yet, but there is a CNOT. And what it does is to change the second qubit based on the first qubit. And what does a H and the C0 together do? Remember we discussed entanglement before. You would build a uh, entanglement between these two qubits when you have a H and a C0. So intuitively what Deutsch Hose algorithm is doing you are starting with some pure zero, zero qubit state, and the H gate will change all of them into a superposition of zero and ones. And then this last qubit comes in. It started with zero, but then when you do an X gate on it, it would bring this negative sign into your system because uh, H gate applied to a one state is the minus state. And then this black box is set up so that if f of x is constant, your oracle actually does nothing to your input qubits, these qubits here. So if that's the case, then when it goes out of the black box, nothing is changed. So applying a H gate to them will bring them back to where they started. So all of the outputs will be zero. However, if you want your black box to have this uh, balanced function, then what it is doing is it actually entangles this qubit, uh, this state, with any of the, the other state. So this then entanglement allows you to carry this negative sign over to your output of the oracle. And turns out that because this negative sign brought by this last qubit here, half of the time you would have a positive uh, amplitude for all of the states being zero but half of the time it will have a negative amplitude. So in fact, what this black box did, if the function is balanced, is that it creates this in destructive interference for these states preserving. So the output, if you measure 0, 0, 0, 0, and if they are all 0, that tells you your, uh, your function is constant. 
But if you measure any of those qubits being one, if there is just even one one state, you would know that your function is balanced. Um, I know this is usually quite confusing uh, to first when people first see it. Let's take another example, just um, because we have so many qubits here, um, the mathematics can get very lengthy. Let's reduce it down to the Deutsch algorithm where we only have one uh, input qubit. So this is what Deutsch algorithm does. It's trying to find there are only two options now, only two qubits involved. If a um, function is balanced, it's either when x is zero, it gets f of x to zero, one to one, or zero becomes one, one becomes zero. This is balanced. This is a one to one function. But if it is constant, say is always becoming zero, no matter your input, or it always becomes one, both cases are telling you the function is constant. Kitty, yes? Mm -hmm. Is there a question? Yeah, I said you are frozen, or you were frozen a second ago for the whole slide discussion. Oh, we usually, yeah, I would present for half an hour and then we can have discussions and questions after. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just saying your screen was frozen. Oh, it is? Yeah, uh, which, it's fine now. Oh, it's fine now, okay. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, it's a little laggy. I think next time I probably won't use, won't use this again. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so, if you want to figure this out classically, you have to test each step. You need to do one uh, run of your classical algorithm and then see what your end result is. Uh, if it is in this case, what happens next? Um, you have to evaluate all of your possibilities. But as I mentioned earlier, if we turn it into a quantum algorithm, they would uh, not need to be measured. Uh, they would not need to be run n times. Uh, so the Deutsch algorithm is just a two qubit version of Deutsch Hose algorithm. So we would reduce this circuit into this below circuit, only two qubits involved. So that's much easier to follow and see what happens with the math. Okay, so the Deutsch algorithm is trying to find out if the function f of x is constant or balanced. And in fact, in here, you would replace it with a quantum algorithm that has oracle in it. So you need to build a oracle based on the different possibilities of f of x. Let's see step by step. You can construct these four possibilities. So classically, you have um, constant zero, so f of x is zero, constant one, f of x is one. If it's balanced, but same, is um, f of x would equal to x. But if it is balanced reverse, you will have a reverse of x. So these are the four probabilities. And you can write a truth table. This is how a constant with x would look like. But then now we're dealing with quantum algorithm. You need to even expand it to further. Your truth table will have all these possibilities written out. So if your x is 0, your y could be 0 or 1. And similarly, with x is 1, you have two possible y values. And then you just write out, OK, constant is constant 0, then all of the x is 0. And then you calculate what y uh, c naught 
or control, uh, y is the control and f of x is target, you will know that if um, y is zero, f of x, uh, this overall is zero. If y is one, this result is one. So you just do this calculation. So you see that this here is exactly the same as, as y. So then in this quantum oracle here, we do nothing. We just let the, uh, the qubits pass through without doing, making any gates. But if you had um, a constant one, you will notice that uh, is the opposite to y. So all of these qubits got flipped for, for y then you know, okay, I'm gonna put a X gate to this second qubit to get this kind of truth table. But if it's balanced, which means half of the time it will have zero and half of time is one. You, you see that you would be able to get this value if you had a C naught in between these qubits. So you can just try to construct this um, truth table and you will see that this is what you need to do. With balance reverse, uh, you is same there, but then you need to flip the qubit. So you put an X there. The significance here is that you see that if the function is, if they were constant, either constant zero or one, there's no interaction between the two qubits inside the oracle. But if your function is balanced, you have this uh, C naught in between them. You, you connect it to the two qubits inside the black box. You can for sure write all of the uh, steps out in mathematics and I will highly recommend you do that at home to realize it looks difficult, but turned out is very, very easy. So you should try going through the math and try to reproduce it on your own to realize how this is done mathematically. So one way to study quantum computing is that um, people say shut up and calculate. So you will get, uh, you will understand mathematically how it works. Um, and that is my language and I, I like doing this, but it's not always the same for everyone. And intuitively, this is uh, intimidating. So what we can do is um, just intuitively looking at those gates, as I mentioned for Deutsch Hoser earlier, is that all you are doing is to make your state into a superposition and then introduce a negative sign, then based on your oracle setup, you will either get your output zero or your zero will be canceled out. So you will get one as your output. And those two cases correspond to function being constant or balanced. And I can even uh, write this out more for you here. I made a note here for myself to not forget is um, try to write out the steps. So this x plus one is this here. When your first qubit got a uh, H gate on it, and now you are combining your system with a, a minus state, which is from your y here. And then what happens uh, through this black box? Uh, so first you need to expand this. You will get a positive zero, zero, and then a negative zero, one, positive one, zero, and negative one, one. Okay is I'm writing with my finger here, it's not very pretty. Stop, uh, my computer stopped 
recognizing my pen. Um, so then what happens after you um, go through, say, I pick a balanced state just to prove the, the point. And what that truth table earlier told me, if I used this um, balanced same truth table, then what it's doing is based on my x, I would change y accordingly. So this would then become 0, 0, nothing changes, minus 0, 1, nothing changes because it, the first cube is 0. But then your second one will become uh, 1, 1. So this amplitude becomes positive. Uh, and then the last one is 1, 0. Then what's happening is that you have these interference negative uh, amplitudes here, so it will bring destructive interference. So if you want your first qubit to be uh, zero, uh, and then your first qubit to be one, Actually, it doesn't really matter. So because the first qubit, you want to put it into a state where it is a superposition so that you can uh, do a H to it to figure out if it is 0 or 1. So you will actually want to look at your first qubit being 0 and 1 there. So this gives you a positive state and this one will give you a negative state and then similarly looking at this qubit here this will give you a negative state and this will give you a minus positive state. So what's happening here is this, the amplitude for the positive states are destructively interfering. So as a result, they would cancel each other out. And all you're left with is this minus state. And then when you do a H to it, you would then obtain your state one. So it turns out that there's no possibility of obtaining zero when you measure your first state if your function is balanced. So this is an exercise you should try to do at home uh, to try the other cases. The intuition I want people to establish here is to understand that when this negative sign gets introduced. If it interacts with your uh, other, one of the other qubits, and because of the H here and the C naught here, you are essentially entangling the, the two qubits inside this oracle, then your output would cancel. You will have half of the time that the zero amplitude zero's amplitude would be positive and half of the time negative. So you canceled uh, you destructively interfere them. But then if you don't mix those two qubits, you don't make them interact, then the top qubit would just come out without being altered. So in both constant case, you will get your output being zero. This is what Deutsch and deutsch hose algorithms do. That's all it's trying to figure out is the nature of the function. So it's not a super useful algorithm. We don't use it anywhere. However, it is a very cool demonstration to show you this 
a powerful effect when you have both superposition interference and entanglement involved in your algorithm. So classically, you will have to run your system multiple times, but then quantum, in the quantum wise, you just need to run your algorithm once. So there are a couple of exercises that's related to today's topic. You should look up on the um, quantum katas. And katas also has two options. It has its own Deutsch Hose algorithm katas, but it also has a tutorial option where it um, shows you some of the details. So there's the Deutsch Hose you should try out. There's also the tutorials, which has a more um, explained step-by-step, -step. sorry, previous. So I would recommend people go back and try these, which will help you understand what we discussed today. And another place you can look up is in the documentation page on the Microsoft's documentation site. Uh, we have the samples inside the documentation and you can download the code from GitHub and try those out. So there are three, three exercises you can choose and pick to run. And then if you just look at the tutorial, how to set up the Deutsch Hose algorithm, it's actually very straightforward. All it's asking you to do is to use code to set up this circuit. And the usefulness of the code is that as you grow your qubit number of qubits, you wouldn't want to draw all of your qubits out, but you can just use the Q sharp language use code to directly write out. Um, you have n qubits and you can apply h and um, x gates and you can apply Oracle. This is exactly step by step trying to set up this QB here. So you should go back and try to run this katas. That's it. Um, to finish off, I'm announcing another certificate this Wednesday. The questions are as follows. This is, this is less technical quiz uh, is more of like a historic fun entertainment. So here, I wonder who came up with the term quantum oracle, because it really kind of created this barrier for me to learn what this term is about. That's not in my culture, that's not in uh, my vocabulary before. So if you are curious like me, please search around and see who came up with the term. And then I have embedded some characters in the comics. So on page six, who is this person? And on page 26, who is this? So you can, you can pick any of this and then tag me on social media uh, as I mentioned earlier, and you will get a, another certificate, which I would announce on Wednesday. Okay, so that's it. Time for questions. <laughs>